Every person who says they still support Brexit and they try and justify it because these same problems are happening in other countries. The same problems are happening in other countries, but it's a lot worse in Britain and that's because of Brexit. Finally, we've been able to let the cattle out. We did this yesterday. I will share um, a film of them coming out, uh, but it's so great to see them outside finally at last, having had a very long winter inside because of the relentless rain that we've had since mid-October. Normally they're outside until the end of October, early November, and they're out towards the end of April. So they've really been in the sheds an extra month. Um, so they're jolly glad to be out, but the ground is still very wet. And um, next week looks like we're gonna get more rain. Uh, so things are by no means uh, s settled. Um, anyway, uh, on to this week of bad Brexit news. Uh, the uh, Brexit is making all of our problems a lot worse, as we always thought it would. Um, we uh, have got a continued veterinary shortage, which, is, which was always going to get worse because of the need for border checks, um, because you need more of them. Um, and then, because we've lost freedom of movement, uh, we have lost... Uh, many European vets who used to help us out here on this farm. We um, have always had a vet from uh, either Greece or from Spain and it's getting harder for them to, to um, continue to work here. Then the government um, and their ridiculous immigration policy is useless. Not only do we have a vet shortage, we've also got a medicine shortage which is putting people's lives at risk. That medicine shortage is also causing trouble for veterinary supplies. Uh, you know, all of these things can be solved by coming to terms with the fact that Brexit is not working and we need to get rid of Brexit. It can't happen overnight, but step by step, we can get rid of these trade barriers. However, this government have increased trade barriers, as you know. The new checks that have come in since the beginning of the year are going to uh, get worse as time goes on and it's going to get more expensive and push up inflation Don't further. Be deceived. This from Channel 4 News a year ago about the crisis in medicines and pharmacies is worth looking again at given that nothing has changed. By the packed shelves at Calverton Pharmacy in Luton, staff here are finding it increasingly difficult to source everyday medicines. These are all trays waiting for medicines for patients who've been waiting patiently for a, for a period of time, some for a few days, some for weeks, uh, because of the huge supply problems we're having with the whole range of medicines. Those shortages include HRT, antibiotics, blood pressure tablets and painkillers. Mahesh Shah, who owns three pharmacies in Luton, says supply and manufacturing problems have been caused by a combination of factors, including Brexit, the war in Ukraine and the aftermath of the pandemic. If we are unable to supply these, there are very significant consequences for patients. What are those consequences? Well. Basically for patients, it's ill health, the conditions are not in control, they could end up being in hospital. Mahesh Shah is far from alone in his battle to source vital medicines. A survey by the Pharmaceutical Services Negotiating Committee asked more than 8,000 pharmacists if they'd experienced problems with medical supplies. 92% said yes. 87% said it was a risk to patient health and 84% said they'd experienced aggression from patients as a result. It's anxiety, not anger, that Vicky Doherty is all too familiar with. Can I pick up a prescription, please? Despite depending on life-saving drugs for thyroid and autoimmune conditions, Vicky regularly has to wait for her prescriptions, sometimes for up to two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. It can have a huge impact when you don't take it every day what at the same time. What happens when you don't take it? Um, my anxiety um, increases. It's the fatigue, the tiredness, my body aches, I get cramps. Um, it's, you just feel run down, you don't feel well, you don't feel like you can tackle the day. It's just horrendous.
So it's saving your life? Absolutely. Mm. The Department of Health and Social Care says it's working closely with suppliers to ensure resupply of the drug that Vicky relies on as soon as possible. But it's not just supply issues that are proving challenging for pharmacists. Increasing numbers are struggling to keep their heads above water financially. Pharmacists rely on the government to pay them for medicines and services, but they say funding has been cut in real terms by 30%, and that's led to the closure of more than 800 businesses since 2015. It's a really serious crisis, and many pharmacies are now on the brink of collapse. So unless we get an urgent investment of resources into pharmacies right now, many are going to face closure, and that's going to impact on patients really severely. Lloyd's, a major pharmacy name on the high street, has announced it's closing all its 237 branches in Sainsbury's stores. The reason given? Changing market conditions. Lloyd's Pharmacy, how are you today? Tesco's and Asda have also announced some of their in-store pharmacies will close. Back in Luton, Mahesh Shah says he's overdrawn for the first time in decades. Our own finances are tight and... Uh, We've been operating in various pharmacies for over 30 years and we are under huge financial pressure. Has it ever been this difficult? No, I think this is the worst that we've ever seen. We are having actually one of our local pharmacies closing down. News of a local closure is worrying staff at Marsh Farm Medical Centre in Luton. GPs here rely on pharmacists to see patients who have minor ailments, like sore throats and earaches. They want them to do even more, similar to schemes in Scotland and Wales. What I'd like to see is uh, the current scheme of us being able to signpost patients um, to our community pharmacies, for that to be expanded. So I think, um, you know, if community pharmacies were allowed to diagnose, prescribe, independently of general practice, I think that would be great. The Department of Health and Social Care says community pharmacies play a vital role in supporting the NHS and it spends more than two and a half billion pounds on them a year. In response to closures, it says 80% of people are still able to access a pharmacy within a 20 minute walk. Oh.